Hello. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Good. Hi, I'm Jen. Uh, I work at Memberful in Strategic Partnerships. Over to my left, we've got Catalina Mayorga, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of El Camino Travel. Yeah, so today we are here to talk to you a little bit about membership and how that can help you with what you're doing with your content, with your travel content, whether that's you know, writing or making videos or anything like that. And Catalina is gonna tell us a little bit about how El Camino Travel has used membership to help propel their business even further. All right. Should we ask a few questions, well, our yeah. little housekeeping? Yeah, go ahead. So we wanna ensure that what we share with you all is actually really useful and you can take actionable next steps. We wanna inspire as well, but I know when I'm at conferences, I love getting really tactile advice. So quickly, uh, just wanna raise of hands, how many people are thinking about starting a membership? Okay, and how many people have a membership already? Okay, awesome. And then the other thing is, if you have questions, I know sometimes we can't get through all of them or we can't get to everyone. If you go to El Camino Travel on Instagram, we have a little question box. And if you wanna submit your questions there, uh, Jen and I will be reviewing it at the end uh, to answer everyone's questions. Awesome. So uh, let's get started then. Uh, so obviously those are our photos. Uh, it's also us right here, but. <laughs> So what we want to talk about in terms of, you know, membership and, you know, making sure that you can make the most out of the community that's following you and what you're doing is, you know, our big thing is you want to get paid to do what you love to do. And membership is a really, really great option to help you with that. So one of our big slogans is where your passion pays. So you can take your audience where they're existing and you can use them, maybe not use them, but... <laughs> You can create a community around them with your membership through Memberful or somewhere else if you want to, but we like Memberful. So. And now I'm going to pass it off to Catalina. Here you go. All right, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about El Camino and, try and give you the story of how we ended up launching a membership. Uh, to give you a little bit more background on the company and myself, I never intended to get into the travel industry or hospitality. I was actually working in international development. I loved my career, was having a great time, getting to travel the world, have these really culturally rich, immersive experiences in, in various countries. Um, however, I was on a trip, a work trip in Guatemala in 2014, and I was talking to my taxi driver and we were talking about everything going on in the region uh, with drug violence. My family is Colombian. Um, we have, you know, a, it's not our only history, but a dark history with drug violence as well. So it really hit close to home. And, you know, out of nowhere, he goes, you know, thank God for tourism. And I was like, oh, that's, that's super interesting. Why do you say that? He goes, it provides me a reliable income, it provides me a consistent income, or a high income, and the only other industry that can compete with the type of money that I make in tourism is the drug industry. So thank God for tourism, that's what's keeping me out of the drug industry. And so it really hit me hard, and even though I loved my career in international development, I was talking to someone else about this who also started their career in international development, uh, it's, it's an industry that um, a lot of grant money comes in into communities, jobs are created, there's, they don't pay that well, but once the grant runs up, they're out, and there's no uh, economic stability for these communities, and they're stuck in these cycles of poverty. And so I really thought about, okay, how can, um, what does tourism look like now? How can we ensure that we're getting more of our tourism dollars uh, directly into the local communities who really make the travel experiences what they are? And at the same time, a lot of my friends were asking to join um, on my trips. They wanted to go these destinations, but they just didn't feel comfortable going alone. So I started offering uh, small group trips. And as more and more people joined the small group trips who I did not know personally because of word of mouth and, and uh, about these trips spreading, uh, what would result would be quite remarkable. Majority of the people joining the trips were, were women travelers. And afterwards, you know, they were thanking us and saying, this is the first time I really got to fully immerse myself in a destination. 
uh, have these culturally immersive experiences and not have all this anxiety or concerns around my safety. And I really got to let my hair down. And I could understand and relate as a woman traveler. I'm probably on the extreme end of off the beaten path travel. I've actually had 12 AK-47s pointed at me in the middle of a coffee field in Guatemala and I've gone hiking with uh, former guerrilla soldiers in the rural mountains of Colombia. But even for myself, I dread traveling alone. So um, when we just kept hearing this over and over again and it was undeniable, we decided we were gonna double down on the uh, unique needs and priorities of women travelers. We looked at the market, we realized no one was really focusing uh, in this way on women travelers. And when we did that, we experienced exponential growth. We started growing quite quickly. We actually ran and operated trips. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Condé Nast Traveler, but they're fastest growing sub-brand women who travel. And uh, things are going great. And then 2020, uh, which we all know about, it, you know, our industry was one of the hardest hit, um, but we are a pretty resilient and gritty brunch at El Camino. Um, so, uh, this is, you know, what we decided um, um, in when we, we saw that, you know, the world was going to shut down. Um, we had this innate understanding that um, for our community, travel uh, was not a luxury. It was a lifestyle, and a big part of their lifestyle was about to go missing. And so we wanted to understand as a company how could we best show up for our community. So we started doing user interviews and polls and surveys. And what we would hear back from them would be really surprising, really opened our eyes. So a couple of things. Um, first, that for a lot of them, a lot of the, the women travelers that are part of our ecosystem, they view travel akin to the gym, spa, and even therapy. It's their source of wellness. It's how they seek personal growth, get pushed out of their comfort zone, uh, look for cultural and intellectual stimulation. But the one thing that was really surprising that we kept hearing was that um, it, aside from all the health, all the health part of uh, the pandemic, uh, they were, travel to them is a big part of their identity, and they really feared or had this kind of fear around like, well, what do I do now? Now that you know I can't go travel or wheels aren't leaving the runway. Um, so what we decided to do, and this goes into membership, is launch an annual membership that really took what we had become known for offline in real life, which was uh, exposing our travelers to fascinating people from all around the world and different cultures and creating community. At, at our core, we are community builders at El Camino and bring it into a digital space. So that is how we started with membership. Oh, sorry, I'm the one that has the clicker. I didn't realize that. So yes, the pandemic hit. Um, we went out and interviewed our audience. Sorry, I didn't uh, <laughs> click forward with this. Um, and um, really the membership has evolved as the world has opened up because we do have a front row seat to our community and we can see how we can best show up for them. But it's what has stayed very consistent is that what we do with our membership is that we provide our community members the best resources, connections, and experiences for high-low travel. I'm not sure if you're familiar with high-low travel, but um, it's kind of, you know, between what I would say like budget and luxury travel. It's folks who really uh, want to We'll, we'll splurge on that really cute boutique hotel or that one meal, but they also want to go to that hole-in-the-wall taco place that only locals know about to get the best Al Pastor taco. So we really wanted to become the go-to space through our membership for women travelers to access all of that information in one place. Um, I know Jen will talk a lot about this as well, but from our experience um, and why I think membership could be huge for the travel industry is that it allows you to monetize your passion and expertise. All the time you've spent traveling the world, getting to know different providers, uh, take all of that and actually be able to create a second or additional revenue stream. Um, people are seeking that information, people are seeking that intel and that knowledge, and so I think membership's a great way to be able to uh, uh, disseminate it. I always say it's like almost like the Netflix model, like you can create really amazing content, really amazing resources, and distribute it to 
uh, a few people, hundreds of people, thousands of people. It all takes the same work if you're you know, distributing it to a few two thousands, um, but it's a great way to be able to create additional uh, income and passive income while you know, not taking up a ton of additional um, labor or work. Um, why I also love membership for El Camino is that we have uh, complete ownership of our community and our audience. I know a lot of people will equate an Instagram following to a community, and Instagram is really important to a lot of travel businesses, including ourselves. But at the end of the day, we don't, we're renting, what I like to say, we're renting from Instagram and Facebook. Anything could happen. They could, you know, the algorithm changes, which I know we've all experienced that, and you really have no way, you, you're, you're powerless. So with the community, you get in membership, you have a direct line of communication, you have a front row seat to your um, members, to your audience, and you are able to really um, be able to control the kind of that uh, relationship. And... Uh, finally, it allows you a really unique way to build trust in a, in a very authentic and transparent relationship with your audience. At the end, of, you know, we see it as a huge privilege that people are paying a membership. We do not take it for granted by any means. And so we want to understand how we can best show up and best provide value to our members. And uh, one of the things is we have a travel planning forum. And so we can see a lot of the pain points they're struggling with right now or as things uh, develop, and then we can um, create resources to answer that. So one really clear example is, and maybe a lot of you guys are also facing this, is with uh, Airbnb. The prices are going up or you know, everyone's remote working or there's digital nomads, and uh, it's hard to find uh, reasonable accommodation as a digital nomad. And so... Uh, that's something we see a lot in our community or questions asked a lot about that. So we've been able to create some resources, connections, even partnerships to be able to help ease that burden for our membership. And I'm going to pass it off to you. All right. So when we're thinking about membership, and I know a lot of you didn't raise your hand when you're like thinking, when we asked if you're thinking about it, but we just wanted to give you some Pretty, pretty solid numbers about where things are going with membership. Um, we're, our, our parent company is Patreon, so I bet a bunch of you have heard of Patreon. Um, we kind of sit on the white label side of that with Memberful. But so these are some numbers that are combining the two. Uh, if you look at it, 250,000 plus creators are on membership between the two companies. We've paid out over three and a half billion to creators. We have eight million plus members, and in the last couple of years, we have tripled our creator growth. Um, so tons and tons of people over these last couple of years have turned to membership as a way to diversify their revenue streams and you know add that sustainable passive income sometimes, sometimes it <laughs> They're really working hard on it, but you know, uh, and then it's also can be a quick setup depending on the way that you want your membership to be run. And we're seeing about an average payment for members to be about 12 bucks a month. <clears throat> so memberful and Patreon, what's the difference between the two? Uh, Patreon, which most folks have heard of, uh, they are a all-in-one platform. So basically you take your information, you go over to Patreon, you kind of plug in what you want your membership to be. Do I want a $5 a month tier? What kind of benefits do I want to offer? And it's all going to exist on Patreon in that feed. Whereas with Memberful, we're calling it sort of a decentralized solution. So Memberful is going to meet you where you're at. Um, if you are on a website, for instance, if you have a WordPress blog or something like that, Memberful can come in and plug in, and it can give you that opportunity to protect content on your site for your members. So we're making sure that your branding is front and center, and it's completely white-labeled, so you can control the experience from beginning to end with your members, and making sure that they know that it is your membership versus, you know, going to Patreon and saying, go to my Patreon. It's all existing in one place. 
And yeah, really what we want to get down to with membership is that deep, deep connection with your audience. Travel is inherently community-based. Everybody has these followings that are really excited about what you guys are doing, and they're there to consume your content. They're there to follow along on your journeys, and they're all like-minded folks that want to be a part of what you're doing. And so membership can deepen that connection. It creates your little space on the internet that, like Catalina was saying, is away from the Instagrams of the, or the Facebooks or the Twitters or whatever, where you're not controlling what's going on over there. This is your space where you're existing and you can connect with your audience there and you know that you have full control over what is happening. So when we're thinking about membership in terms of starting, what I've heard from a few different people is, okay, membership sounds intriguing, but I don't think that I have the time. I can't create that extra content. I am already juggling way too many things as it is. Well, when you're thinking about membership in terms of, this is a sustainable, reliable, recurring income that's going to happen month over month, whereas you're taking a job one month and maybe you don't get a job for a couple of months depending on, you know, you know the pandemic, for instance. Um, and so the membership, uh, the membership income that's coming in every month provides that base so that you don't have to take all these jobs that are going to burn you out. So you have that base that you know you're going to be sitting on and you can add the jobs when you, when you want and the content creation when you want. Um, but really what you, you want to do when you're starting your membership is to start small. So talk to your audience. Ask them, what are you guys looking to learn? What do you want from me? What, do you want a community? Do you want extra content? Do you want a podcast? Make sure that, that all of their opinions are taken into account so that you don't, have to, you don't have to start and just wing it and hope that folks like it. Uh, we're thinking like one to two benefits, maybe you have like a newsletter or um, if you already have a podcast, like a members only episode or something like that. And you can do a soft launch test with some of your biggest, biggest fans and they can really help you hone in on what they're excited about, what's working, what's not. Can I add something? Please. To that? Yeah. So I briefly mentioned this, but I think one of the best things you can do if you're considering membership or even if you have membership right now and you're kind of struggling is to first do user interviews and go out there, find 10 to 15 people who are highly engaged with you on whatever other platform that you know and ask to do a 15 minute interview with them and set up a few questions, you know, five or 10 questions to really understand like who they are as a customer or a potential community member and what they, not even what they want from you, but like what do they need from your industry, the travel industry, what's missing for them and then uh, being able to really create kind of those first few benefits around that, it, I think is, it was very, very helpful for us not going into this, not launching a membership, you know, blindly with and trying to figure it out as we went and, and hoping that people would be excited about it when we launched it. Um, we took a lot of, of feedback into consideration in building out the benefits. Yeah, so clearly it works. <laughs> Uh, but when we're talking about starting small, uh, the one to two benefits, we're not saying send a members only newsletter twice a week. That's a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to start off by saying, hey guys, I'm starting a membership. Uh, I'm a writer, so I'm going to do a newsletter once a month for my members only. And it's going to be an in-depth look at where I currently am in the world or you know, something along the lines of what your audience is really excited about and what they want to be a part of. Or maybe you just start with a Discord community where your fans can connect with each other and maybe they'll start going to meetups together and they'll connect in the cities that they're in. So you're really just providing a space, but starting small is always the best way to do it and then you can tack on those extra benefits when the time comes, when folks start saying, hey, 
I really wish you had blank. Or people are just really excited about something else and then you can launch it down the line and test it as you go. But yeah, so on the right of the screen there, you see a bunch of different benefits that could potentially be thought starters for you. Newsletter, members only podcasts, behind the paywall, blog posts, discount codes if you have merch, or if you're partnering with brands and you wanna work with them on some members only discount codes. Um, exclusive access to you, maybe that's through Q and A's or ask me anything. Um, and then a community like Discord or Discourse. And in case it's helpful, uh, a few of the benefits we offer that do super well, uh, we put out two exclusive travel guides for our members each month. So as Jen was saying, you don't have to create a ton of content. I'm subscribed to a few newsletters. I can't even keep up with all the content, uh, but people just want really strong quality content. They don't want, they don't want quantity of content. Um, we also have a travel forum that uh, we've brought in a lot of our colleagues from the travel industry who we consider some of the uh, most prominent uh, travel experts for certain destinations to help answer their questions on a planning forum. And then we give exclusive discounts to our own trip, our own trips, and then we uh, exclusive trips for our community. Um, that if you're not a community member, you don't even know about it or you can't, you know, it makes them feel very, very special. So we're not, we don't have like this long list of benefits that we're offering them, but it's much more for us that what really has worked is focusing on the quality rather than the quantity. Yeah, and then just jumping off of that, when you're thinking about these benefits, you want something that's high impact and low effort. So something that you can put out into the world that you're not spending hours and hours and hours and hours and hours because then you're not going to be motivated to keep on doing that. Um, so. so diving a little bit into Memberful as a solution. Uh, now that we've talked about membership and we've kind of gone over what you can do with membership, Memberful kind of steps in there as this white label solution, which I covered a little bit when we were talking about the Memberful versus Patreon. So it meets you where you're at, so you can have your branding front and center. So it's decentralized, so it's going to integrate with the tools in the programs that you're currently using. Are you using MailChimp for your newsletter? You can integrate directly with Memberful. Are you using Discord for your community or Discourse? You can in integrate directly with Memberful. And then if you want to get really advanced, we have an open API, and you can build off of that, and we have webhooks too. <laughs> That's if you really want to get technical. Um, and finally, you have full ownership of your business, and that's the biggest thing. Like we said, you're renting on Instagram, you're renting on Twitter, you're renting on Facebook. This is a place for you to fully own what you're doing and own your audience, be a part of what they're doing. Or even a better way to even to say is like own all the hard work that you're yeah. putting into engaging your community and audience on these other platforms. You put like have full ownership of that. You 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 know put so much passion and effort into it. It's it's something we all deserve. Exactly. And then finally, uh, just to brag a little bit, I think we have the best customer service team possibly ever. <laughs> so <laughs> if you guys started on Memberful. We're always going to be there to help you out and help you through with figuring out your membership or, you know, pushing, pushing past your membership and growing and expanding into new pieces of it. And a little just uh, like, what, I don't can't remember the, the term for it, but like organic review or feedback is we use two other payment platforms before Memberful and uh, struggled with them for various reasons with our community, then found Memberful, and I can uh, attest their customer service was absolutely amazing, helped us uh, transfer everything over, all the payments, was super easy, all the subscribers um, made it, did, did not make it a burden for us as a company. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, um, Talking a little bit about how Memberful kind of meets you at the programs that you're using. I know that these are kind of just logos up there, but it's giving a, an idea of the kind of integrations that we're diving into. On the bottom right, you can see it says future integrations. 
We are working on a bunch of different integrations at any given moment. We're always making sure that, you know, we don't have a roadmap that is you know, three years long. We want to make sure that what you guys are interested in, what our audience is interested in, what our customers are interested in, we want to make sure that we can continue to build things that are right in the moment. So we're going to keep building up this list and hopefully it's like four lines long next year. I don't know. but <laughs> So why, why membership? Why now? Why, why does it make sense to launch this now? Uh, now that you can go out and travel and you can continue to get back to what you were like pre-pandemic. Uh, well, as we all saw, Things can get taken away from you, the brand deals, the, the experiences, all of that stuff. Your audience is going to stick with you. So now's the time to gather them and build that sustainable business off of their excitement and interest in what you're doing. So in terms of a sustainable business, you're going to build off of the experiences and relationships that you already have. And you're going to bring your audiences on that journey with you off of the Instagrams and off of, I've said Instagram like four times already. <laughs> um, and then finally, now is when folks want to follow these authentic voices. They want to listen to what you have to say and follow your journey and support these unique perspectives and escapes. So this is the perfect time to become a membership creator and form that space for your community. And then finally, we have uh, a couple of, a few uh, travel creators on our platform. You may have heard of them. Um, and of, of course, El Camino Travel, which is not on this list, but was, a, was, was here earlier. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the Buckless family, Localer, uh, Craig Mod, Pack Hacker, The Expedition, Explore Up Close, Women's Travel Collective, God Save the Points. I think we have a couple more that have just migrated over to Memberful from a couple of different platforms. But these are some of the examples of what they're doing as their main thing with their travel membership program. So I'd encourage you to check them all out. Definitely check out El Camino Travel as well. Um, but they're all great examples of the different ways that you can run a membership through Memberful. Obviously, it's quite varied across the board. So you can do a lot, and you can have your own website, and you can make it all your own. And yeah, so does anybody have any questions? We also might have a few coming in, but happy to answer any questions that you guys have about membership or about Catalina and El Camino travel, anything like that. Also, if you don't, we can just have a conversation. <laughs> Uh, one thing I forgot to mention um, as well is as like the world started opening up again and we started to run small group trips in the second half of 2021, uh, what we saw with our membership was really amazing from um, a customer loyalty and marketing standpoint. So uh, we have a free trial, 75% of the people who do the free trial convert, convert into a paid membership. And then of that 75%, one in three or 33% converted into buying a trip with us in the last year. So that $100 a year membership converted into a 3,200 on average uh, order. And uh, we just calculated this yesterday. That's $445,000 that we made in the last less than a year since we've launched the trips uh, through the membership. So um, it's a great, great way to be able to, what, what we've seen and what the feedback we've gotten is that it gives people an opportunity or interested travelers an opportunity to kind of test out El Camino. We, we also understand that uh, we are, uh, people are spending, you know, their savings for the year with us. They're, it's a the big trip for them. It's a big deal to purchase a trip with us. So the membership allows them an opportunity to kind of 
get fam more familiar with the brand, kind of test out the brand and see if El Camino is the right fit for them when it comes to the small group trip. So another great way to just be able to show off what you are all about in the best possible way to, um, if you have like another bi business line item that you sell as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Question? He asked, how do you decide on your price point? You want to take it? Okay. Um, that's, that's a great question. I, it's kind of, you kind of have to go with what you think is best for your audience. I, I know we talked about this earlier. Do not do free. Like, do not do free. Um, value your work, your, your knowledge, your experience, your expertise. Do a, potentially a free trial so people don't feel locked in and, and they when they convert, it's because they really want to be there. Um, but for us, we played around with different price points for a year and we really felt like, okay, hundred dollars, not a huge commitment, but still a commitment. The other thing too, I think is really important to put a price point because when you just have um, a lot of people who don't pay and it's free, sometimes again, the quality of the community goes down and the quality of the connections and uh, the engagement and so we know that like because people paid they have a little bit more commitment they're going to be in there more they're going to be engaging more they're going to be a resource to the other community members so um, for us a hundred dollars just felt like the right move but in full transparency we started at 249 then we went to 150 and then we decided you know 100 is is a good place for us right now and seems to be working for a lot of our members a year, excuse me, yeah, not a month, but a year. Yeah. yeah, and then just to jump off of that, when you're thinking about pricing, the first thing that you put out, it's, it might not be the right thing, and you, know, you just gotta try it and see if it's working, and maybe you lower your prices, maybe you raise your prices, it all depends on what's going on, but when we're looking at, and when I'm working with customers, it really varies across the board what people are pricing at, if they're doing monthly, if they're doing annual, any of that good stuff. But I always encourage folks to never go below $5 a month because you gotta value what you're doing. And if you're putting it below that, you're kind of saying, uh, well, maybe this content isn't as good as I think it could be. And a lot of the times people are also comparing what they're doing to what Netflix is pricing or Disney Plus is pricing because it seems like the adjacent uh, subscription service. But you're, you're not Netflix, you're not Disney Plus, you don't have millions and millions of dollars going into what you're doing and people are coming to you for your unique perspective and your voice and they value that and they're not gonna value that as much as they would maybe value a Disney Plus subscription. So that's really worth thinking about when you're thinking about pricing what you're doing. But yeah, don't go below that $5 a, a, a month mark. But we're kind of seeing people on the lower end sit around $7 a month, I would say. And then if they're pricing annually, they'll look at uh, a 20% discount or like two month off discount for, for that annual membership uh, than they would be paying if they paid all 12 months on the monthly plan. Yes, back there in the hat. So, uh, two questions. One, white label, can you just define that for the Clover? And number two, uh, memberful does not have levels like Patreon. Those are my two questions. Okay, yeah. So, did everybody hear that or should I repeat it? Okay, he asked two questions. Define white label and does memberful have levels it, tiers like Patreon does. So white label is essentially um, making sure that your brand is front and center. So if you go to Patreon, for example, you're saying, hey, go to my Patreon. Uh, if you go to your website and you have a membership already plugged in on your website, you're just saying, hey, go to my membership on my website. So it's putting you front and center. So the white labeling is 
um, taking away any other brand that could oppose your brand. Um, that's essentially what it is. So like, for instance, you go to the New York Times website, they have a membership there, uh, but they're not saying that they're the Patreon membership for New York Times. They're the New York Times membership, therefore it is a white label. So Memberful's really sitting in the background to make sure that your brand is front and center, doing all the hard stuff while you put all the, the good content out. Uh, and then in terms of tiers, uh, you can create tiers with Memberful. You can create pretty much as many plans as you want. That's what we call a tier. Uh, and you can make it, like, I think we have a customer that has something like 45 plans on theirs for each of their different podcasts, because they're a podcast network. But yeah, you can price them however you want. You can make a monthly plan, an annual plan for each different um, level of content that you're putting out. Uh, on average, we probably see folks have between one and four tiers. Um, but yeah, hope that answered your question. Great. Anyone else? Yeah, in the pink shirt. You definitely can if you would like to do that. If you're running it all through your website, generally folks are putting together a terms of service privacy policy to put on their website to make sure that you know everything is running smooth. Memberful also has its own terms of service and privacy policy that you're agreeing to when you're signing up, so you can definitely give that a peek. I haven't worked with tons of people who have directly hired a lawyer to, you know, review all of that, but um, yeah, it's worth it's worth looking into if it's something that you feel really concerned about or wanting to make sure you get extra set of eyes on that stuff. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, in case anyone didn't hear that, how did we introduce this to our community? So uh, we did it in a couple ways. Uh, we did launch this during, in August 2020. So the, a time when people were feeling more isolated than ever and disconnected than ever, and a, a moment where people were also feeling very under-stimulated, uh, both intellectually and cult culturally. So what we did, um, we definitely built some hype around it. Uh, we, um, I'm trying to remember exactly how we did it, but we first went to our email list. We, we, we let people know this was coming. Um, we also ran some polls to also get more involvement and having people feel like they were I think it says in one of these slides, feel that they were part of our journey, right? And feel like they were part of uh, the next evolution of El Camino and um, really framed it in that way and um, use kind of what, used where people were, their, that their pain points at the time and being able to say like, okay, here's how the membership, this is what we're gonna be offering to be able to make you feel excited about this incredible world of ours again. We're gonna be bringing straight to your living room these uh, global movers and shakers from Ghana to Copenhagen, art directors, musicians. Um, we're gonna connect you with each other. Uh, as people started doing domestic travel, we talked a lot about, you know, and there was a lot of confusion, like helping you sort through that confusion of like how to travel right now. We talked a lot about the ethics of travel. Like that was huge for our community early on in the pandemic of like, is it okay to even travel right now? And so grappling, they just had a community to even have those um, have those conversations. We actually hosted dinners on Friday nights where around the ethics of travel and we would have 20 people show up, 20 to 40. We So, the, it evolved, but really at that time it's like that's what we 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 did. And so I think now what would you might want to consider is just like 
Again, this is why the user surveys are so important and understanding you know, your community and, and what they want is understanding kind of what are the pain points, what are the things that they're not able to get elsewhere from the travel industry or from other travel resources or um, spaces or segments and uh, really uh, actually listen to what they're saying, like maybe get their permission of course, but record or write down and use some of the direct wording they use to build out your marketing materials. That's something we did as well. So um, like hearing those words around personal growth and uh, using travel to get pushed out of their comfort zone, like that came, we use that all the time now in our marketing in general and that came from these interviews. So that, that's one thing I would recommend. Awesome. Any, any other questions? I know one person at the table had a question. Um, they also do small group trips or retreats and uh, they asked about like, okay, how do you know that the people who really like love your trips, they're gonna sign up for whatever trip are actually not, like how are you gonna get people beyond just those people to sign up for your membership? Um, so there's a couple ways you can approach that. I think, again, I'm gonna beat this drum, but user interviews are really important to make sure you're building something of value. Um, also think about membership as a way, as I mentioned with our own experience, of a way for someone to road test your, your brand as a whole and what you stand for as a brand. Like take whatever you do with your retreats or small group trips and think about like how can you, um, how can you, espouse those values as a brand through what you're offering in your membership so someone really gets to experience your brand and the culture of your brand uh, through the membership. And then second, I think um, Pauline was talking about it yesterday in the first keynote, but uh, I loved how she talked about like how there's all these niches now within travel and that you just Everyone, like if you want a vegan tour in Thailand, you can start, you can find that now. And so um, really lean into what you are an expert about and like what your life experience makes you, makes what you're building so unique. Others are likely seeking that as well and they can't find it in other places. Like think of it as like the modern day SEO of just like how, you know, people, search or whatever and they're, they're trying to find something very specific. It's like how can you provide that value to them of what they're looking for through your membership. Um, I think, you know, web two or, you know, web, like a few years ago where the web was, it was the democratization of the internet. Like everyone had a voice and it was a huge ocean to swim in. And I think especially with the pandemic and where things are going, it's now about the niches. Like people want to feel part of something, they want to feel part of communities, they want to feel part of a brand, like the brands they love, they feel they're actually invested in them emotionally. And so think of like, how can you create a membership or community that allows you to best uh, showcase that um, and showcase what you stand for as, as an individual a creator or as a company? Yeah, um, I believe that we're about out of time. Uh, but right. what I did want to say to... Are we, are we hmm? out of time? I thought I'd end at 3.45. Am I wrong? Oh, they said... Oh, we're on. Okay. I'm right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 4.45. <laughs> sorry. There was... Oh, sorry. 4.45. My bad. Um, what I did want to end on is... Uh, that's my contact information. If you guys are really, really excited about Memberful and you just want to email me right now, you totally can. Or you can come talk to me. I'd be super pumped to talk more about membership and see if you are interested in it. And also, if you're interested in Patreon too, they're our parent company. Come talk to me. I can hook you up with the right person over there too. Um, and also, Catalina, if you want to talk to her about El Camino travel, um, yeah, but hope you guys enjoyed our chat about membership and you're super psyched about it now. Yeah, I was gonna, one more thing. Um, sorry, I wasn't looking at my phone to be rude, but we created a code if you wanna try out our membership or if you just even, we have a two week free trial. 
if you just want to kind of experience what a travel membership could be or what we're doing, feel free um, to come test us out. I have to find the website, but uh, get 20% off on the membership, the annual membership. Just use TRAVELCON20 in all caps. Let me just, I think it's ElCamino.travel forward slash membership. So sorry, I should have had this prepared. I think it is that too. It is? Okay. Yeah. ElCamino.travel forward slash membership. If it's not, come find me. I'm here. I'm going to be at the solo female travel niche, um, but I'll be around tomorrow as well. Amazing. Thanks, everybody.